This is why you see crystal ovens that run way, way above ambient temperature. So even if it gets warmer in the room or colder in the room, the temperature of the crystal stays the same. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF. Welcome back to the lab. A while back I did a video on Inmarsat. And, you know, we built a uh, circular polarized helical antenna. This one happens to be uh, right hand. But I ran into a few issues um, that are kind of generic to the problem. Or any time you are experimenting in, in sort of an unknown part of the spectrum, right? So here we are at 1600 megahertz. That's uh, 1645, right? 1.6 gigs. And I'm not sure if I'm pointing at the satellite, at the right uh, satellite. I'm not sure if my receiver is working at those frequencies. Um, I'm not sure if my antenna is working at those frequencies. And I'm not even sure I can get reception. So you have, one, of the, the, one of the problems is you have so many variables. And when you have multiple variables like that, you have to come up with something that... Um, get you sort of on the right track, right? So I don't know, if, how, about, how about this antenna? I don't really know if it works, okay? So that's not gonna be my first thing. My receiver, I think it works, um, but I'm, and I'm tuning to 14 point, uh, or 60, 1645 megahertz, pretty sure of that, but I don't know if the receiver's working, I don't know if the preamp is working. I'm, I'm, real, I'm like, what, where do I start? So I said, boy, wouldn't it be great if I had a comb generator, something that put out a carrier every single so many megahertz. We used those in the cable television uh, world way back when, where we needed to have a carrier every six megahertz, right? Uh, from starting from uh, 50, 54 to up to uh, a gigahertz. And there were a lot of companies that made um, comb generators. You still find them today. Uh, and you can find programmable ones. Um, but here's the deal. This is <laughs> probably the poor man, not the poor man's comb generator, but probably the poorest man of ever's comb generator. Here it is, okay? Doesn't look like anything. But this will allow you to put your radio on the right frequency, up pretty close, right? Um, it will allow you to, to test if your antenna is actually working. So it gets rid of a couple of the problems. Then, then it's up to you to find the satellite and, and do some other stuff. And this is applicable applicable to, um, to all sorts of things. And you'll see. This, this is a standard T, TTL clock or maybe CMOS clock. I don't know. I didn't look up the model number of it. But it's a square wave output. And if you know about square waves, and other waves that are not purely sinusoidal, there's just tons and tons and tons of harmonics. So I said to myself, well, this one's at 50 megahertz. If I want to go up to 1600, I think 1600 is something like the 32nd harmonic. Well, it can't possibly be that much garbage coming out of here, could there? So I said, well, it's worth a shot. And um, I'll give you some close-up pictures of this. But basically all it is 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 a TTL clock in a socket. I'm applying five volts here with a little decoupling capacitor to ground. Okay. Um, negative is the is the circuit board, and then and then the uh, output terminal where it would normally drive some computer stuff um, is just a hunk of wire, just a tiny little wire. And I'll give you a, a, a little bit of. Uh, like I said, close-up pictures and whatnot. So the premise is I have a 50 megahertz clock. Now, let me just say that this 50 megahertz clock is not a frequency reference. So when you go try this you, you, it, and you dial to 50 megahertz on your receiver that you think is calibrated and this thing doesn't land exactly at 50 megahertz, no big deal. It's going to land on 49. It's going to be... 500 cycles off, one kilohertz off. The intention of this crystal, in this clock rather, 
And that's all. And, and it isn't just a crystal. It's a clock with an amplifier and everything, which makes our job a lot easier. But the, the, the point is, this is not a frequency reference. And you'll see that when we go over to the ham table, because this thing is drifting around all over the place. Uh, I'm going to do two things over on the, uh, on the ham bunch, bench. One is, I'm going to turn this on from a cold start, and we'll, <laughs> we'll see how much it drifts around. Then I'll stop for maybe a half hour and let this thing come up to temperature, and we will go up in frequency. We'll go 50, 100, 200, 4, 6, 8. Then we'll go out to 50, 50 uh, megahertz multiples. And you'll see that this carrier is always there. And one way you go, geez, is that a birdie in my receiver? Or is that some other source? You just put your finger on this and you'll see the temperature force it up in frequency. Uh, and then as soon as you take your hand off, it'll slowly drift back down in frequency. So what I have here, well, I'll tell you what, let me do a kind of a close up of this so it's a little easier. Um, and, you, and, and I can explain it better, okay? All right, so I'll catch you. Uh, I'm going to do that part on my iPhone. Dad. All right, guys, here we are on the iPhone. And I'm not the steadiest cameraman in the world, so I'm going to try to do this smoothly. Yeah, see, I'm out of focus there. Let me just zoom in just a hair. Okay, so there you can see this is a run-of-the-mill, 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 run-of-the-mill 50 megahertz clock, okay? And this pin right here, whoops, this one, it's just the lead of the socket tilted up and then with another inch of wire on it. And over here, it's just an SMA connector soldered to the board and then soldered again there. And then the insulation comes up here. Okay, so it's, it's probably two inches long, something like that. One thing you have to really be careful about is you don't want this wire, the output of this clock to touch this wire. Um, you want an air gap in between those, okay? You want the RF to couple through, but you don't want any DC or those really big signals. Typically, this is like, I don't know, three, four, five, six volts of uh, peak to peak. So you don't want that touching, but you do want the air gap. And this, this thing works out really well for, for a couple different purposes. Okay, so there's the, you know, one pin, Bypassed with a capacitor, boy, am I seeing, not very steady here. Bypassed with a little tantalum to ground, minus goes to the circuit board. This other pin of the four pins is, is soldered to the circuit board. And then the last pin is lifted up. Let's see if I can get in better so you can see that. Okay, just lift it up with a piece of wire connected to it. And so even though this thing, fundamentally says, doesn't say that, says 50 megahertz, it's spraying out all sorts of interesting uh, garbage. But 50, 100, 150, 253, 4, 5, all the way up to, uh, I tested it up to uh, 650 megahertz. So this is your reference, okay? Now the other thing is, you can take this, let me zoom back down, back down to uh, some, oops. My finger's in the way. Sorry about that, folks. Um, you could take this, and then you have this connected to your receiver. And you can literally use this as your source and this as your antenna, you know, if you're, if you're working in the, you know, looking for the Inmarsat stuff to find out, holy cow, my antenna does work. You know, I can, I can wiggle it around and, and move it and see that it's actually working. So now you have confidence that your antenna's working, your preamp is working. You're roughly tuned in the area where you want to be. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the other room and we're going to set this up um, at the ham station. And first thing we'll do is we'll turn it on from, from, from cold and you'll see how drifty this is. Again, this is not a frequency reference. This is just hanging out there, making approximately 50 megahertz and it's rich in harmonics and we're going to take advantage of that. Okay, 
So um, catch you over at the uh, ham station. <coughs> So here's the uh, the device again. I don't know, poor man's uh, comb generator, I guess. And we're going to run it. I think this is supposed to run off 5 volts. Ha! We're running it off 6. But anyway, um, then I have the output that goes up to the patch panel here. And again, today we're... Uh, Today we're going to be looking at the RSP Duo and we're going to be using SDR console uh, just because it's easier. To, it's kind of easier for me with my limited uh, uh, software experience to, to uh, move around the band. OK, so let me set that up. Um, one other thing, when when I say I'm putting my finger on it, I'm putting my finger here and that temperature from my finger transmitting into uh, the crystal um, inside here, you'll see the drift immediately. Oh, the other thing to remember is that if this thing is not 50 megahertz, let's let's say it is for, for a second. Actually, let me sit down here. This thing is on 50 megahertz. So what would you expect the second harmonic to be? 100. The fourth harmonic, 200. The fifth harmonic, 250. But suppose it's not exactly on 50 megahertz, like it's not here. Say it's 100 cycles high or low, but we'll use high because I can, I can now, I can do the math then. Um, at 50 megahertz, it might be uh, 50.100. At 100, it's going to be 50.200. At, at 200 megahertz, it's going to be 50.400. And so by the time you get up to the 32nd harmonic, up around 1600 megahertz, it's going to be off uh, uh, two or three kilohertz. But not a big deal. At least now you have a reference, something that you can look at and something that, you know, you could sort of depend on. The other thing you'll see when I put my finger on there, um, my finger is going to be warmer, much warmer, because I think it's what? Look at that. 71 degrees inside and 158 outside what the hell is going on there anyway it's 71 degrees inside and when i put my finger on here it's going to cause the case and then finally the crystal to start rising in temperature and then as soon as i pull it away you'll see but that drift that may be only 10 15 hertz at at 50 megahertz is going to end up being hundreds and hundreds of hertz up at the gig in the gigahertz range so i was going to set a camera up so you could see my finger touching it but pretty much if you look at that um and, and you know what i'm doing you'll you'll see so again we just have that tiny little uh, air gap in between these two pieces okay so i'm going to fire it up here actually uh, i'm going to get the computer going and then we're going to fire it up and we'll watch on console just how much this thing drifts in, in in a couple of minutes or a minute or so and then afterwards we'll do when it comes up to equilibrium um i will go and i'll move up in in harmonics and you'll be able to to see each one of them blah 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 shut up paul and start do the video all right that's where i'm going back in a minute Okay, a little housekeeping here first. Let me uh, let me mute off the background noise. All right, so um, I've got I've got uh, we're dialed up to uh, forty nine 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 four fifty, so six three five hundred and fifty hertz low already. I have not turned the uh, the uh, crystal uh, clock on, uh, but I will here in a second. Contrast is set so that the background is not visible because we're only listening, we're only looking for one frequency at a time here. Um, and what else? Oh, the other thing I wanted to say is I am using, uh, got the Bodner board fired up at 24 megahertz. So that's driving the uh, Uno. 
So that elite, you know, not that it makes a big difference at lower frequencies, but um, I, I, if something is going to drift around in this particular demonstration, I'd rather have it be just the, uh, the clock here that we're working with. So I'm ready to fire it up. And here we go. And where is it? Oh, there we are. I guess I was a little off. Let's center that up. And we'll take a listen, and you'll hear it drift. Okay, I'm going to zoom out on it. And you actually see it drifting, right? Any oscillator does this, but it's drifting lower in frequency. And it's, if, I, if I follow it, it's getting lower and lower, All right? So let's not zoom out quite so wide so that we'll actually have a, the next next step up. Let's go up to a 99 hertz, megahertz. And there's, there's the carrier again. Okay. Let's go up to, uh, we'll jump right up to one to 200. There it is again. Okay, I'm going to touch my finger to it here. Actually, let me, uh, let me speed up the, uh, the graph a little bit. So I'm going to touch my finger to it now and you can watch it move up in frequency instead of down. point is right now that we have an oscillator that is giving us a plus 30 over s9 of course it's you know look at that drift pattern it's beautiful right but it's still warming up still warming up so let's go back up to uh let's go up uh, we're at 200 megahertz now let's go up to 300 megahertz there it is again let's go up to 400 there it is again it's moving much more quickly out of the pass band now. Let's go up to uh, five, 500. Okay, we still have an S9 plus 25 here. It's moving around pretty good. Now I'm gonna put my fingers on it and watch what happens to that. Slows down. Drift back up again. Now I just released it. And immediately starts coming back down again. Okay, so let's let's get up a little higher frequency. Let's go up to uh, uh, let's say uh, we're close to 900 megahertz. Let me let me take the zoom out here and see if we have that. There it is, right there. Oh, I'm not sure that's the right carrier. Well, sure you can be sure just by touching it. And notice how much it moves now that we're getting up in frequency. But you still have a 20 over S9 signal to play with. So, okay, now we're at a gig. Where are we? Okay, one gigahertz, 999.977510. Put that back in the center of the screen. So this is a real viable, is my antenna working? Is my preamp working? Is my, you know, take as many variables out of your receive system when you're sort of forging around in unknown territory. So let's go up to, uh, now we're at uh, 1.1 gigs. Now let's go up to uh, 15. Okay, 14.99. Here it is here. Still, what is that? 20 over, 15 over, something like that. I'll disconnect it for a second. Okay, so it drops off. Connect it back up and watch what happens. Oops, watch it comes whizzing around on frequency. Okay, so I think you can, I, I think you can see that this thing drifts. You see how the drift is slower now? Okay, and it's still moving, it's still moving. But see how it's, the line isn't so aggressive? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this run for 10 minutes, let it reach equilibrium. Uh, before I do that, let's go up to, to uh, what's that, 1600 megahertz. 
and there's there's the output right there still a, a 10 over let's go up to 17 there it is right there so this is really the poorest man's um, comb generator okay it's actually it's starting to uh, slow down itself I'm gonna put my finger on it watch how fast this thing well that was just my hand near it but watch when the heat from my finger starts going Now I let go. Okay, I'll be back in a few minutes. Um, no, no, I won't. This is 1700 megahertz. Let's see, how high can we go? 18? Is it still there? Yeah, the harmonics are starting to drop off quite a bit. But if you're looking for something on 1800 megahertz and <laughs> you can't, you don't know what part of your system isn't working, this is a really cheap way to do it. All right, I'll be back in a couple of minutes once this thing uh, set completely settles. Okay guys, we're pretty much uh, at thermal uh, equilibrium. And you can tell, one of the ways you can tell that is, watch what happens here. There's no more consistent drift in any one direction. So I'm going to do an experiment here. I'm going to wave some air across it with my hand from a foot, from two feet away. Okay, that's because now I'm taking away the heat that's been developed inside, so it has to come back again now. This is why you see crystal ovens that run way, way above ambient temperature. So even if it gets warmer in the room or colder in the room, the temperature of the crystal stays the same. So now I'm uh, two feet away. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually blow on it, and I don't want <laughs> I don't want to hear any comments. Uh, hang on a second. About hot air, but here goes. Right out of the pass band. It's actually kind of pretty to watch, isn't it? Wow, it's taken a long time to come back down again. May not even come right back down again. Yeah, it will. I really cooled it off. So anyway, we are at roughly the 50th harmonic. So if that crystal inside the clock is off by 10 hertz, we're off by... 10 times 50, which is 500 here. Um, if it's off a, a kilohertz, we're off 50 kilohertz, which it looks like it probably is. Yeah, see, it's settling back now. All right, so I don't think anybody really wants to sit and watch that thing. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this. And I just wanted to, to say, if you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you would, because there's a ton of other videos out there with with equal equal quantities of, uh, of, <laughs> of electronic content and weirdness. Also, I have a super thanks button. So if you like seeing videos like this, it does take a lot of time to make these. I am retired, of course, so I have time to make these, but it takes a lot of effort to, to go through and do all these and edit and everything. So if this is something you enjoyed, I, please take advantage of the super thanks button and throw a, a dollar or two in this direction. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, everybody. This is W1VLF from the hand bench. Watch what I put. Signing off. Seventy three, everybody.